Welcome to creating a node base editor in Unity 3D, lesson five. So what we're going to do is we're actually going to, uh, let me launch the editor here, we're going to get our views actually drawing something. So we need to start to be able to draw a GUI within our views themselves, as well as draw a background for the, uh, the uh, views that we've created. So uh, I, went, I went ahead and um, actually filled out, let me launch Mono Develop here. So I went ahead and actually filled out the uh, work view so you guys didn't have to watch me uh, do that over again. Uh, so I'm going to go and launch the node property view and the view base. And I'm also going to need the node editor window here. All right. So uh, now, <clears throat> excuse me, what, what I want to do is actually get an instance of the work view going here. So I'm going to say public uh, GT uh, node work view like that. We'll just call this the work view like so already. And again, what we need to do down in our create views down here is just simply say curve window dot uh, work view equals a new work view. And that will get everything going. And then we just need to make sure to update the uh, work view. So um, order of uh, rendering actually follows the order in which their um, update views are called. So I want to call the work view first because the property view is always going to sit on top of um, the uh, the work view. All right. So I'm just going to say work view uh, dot update view. There we go. So just like that, we actually have um, the two uh, views working. So if I were to recompile this here, alrighty, and you'll notice that I'm updating the work view. There we go. So we're updating uh, the base view class, updating the work view, updating the property view. So we're doing the work view first, and then the property view second. So I'm just going to launch that again just to make sure everything's nice and fresh. Um, I also want to check over here. So when I check to make sure that I do, in fact, have these particular instances, I also want to check to make sure that the work view is null or not. <clears throat> so that way, either if the property view or the work view are null, then we're going to go ahead and just create our views anyways. All right, so let's go um, back to our work view over here. And everything's all working out just fine. I like to organize the tabs up here um, based off of their hierarchy um, in their inheritance, basically. So node editor is calling all the views. There's the view base. And then the view base or the, uh, the different work view and property view actually inherit from the view base. All right, so that is all set up. So what we want to do now is we actually want to um, draw some sort of GUI inside of our uh, work views. But we need to actually define this view rect um, right here, this rectangle for each of those views. So to do that, uh, I'm going to comment out this debug log there. All right. And to do that, uh, what I want to do is I want to actually process um, the, the rectangles. And I want to do that based off of um, whatever values we pass into this update view over here. All right. So um, what we're going to need is we're going to need the current um, editor rectangle. OK. So we're going to say rect, editor rect. So we're going to add some arguments to this update view. All right. And then we also want to do another rect called the percentage rect. Now, this is going to allow us to dynamically update the size of those rectangles of these views. And you'll see as we get further into this lesson um, how all this stuff is going to work. So with that um, created, um, I also need to um, make sure that my overridden um, methods over here include those same arguments. Because if I were to save this and come back into Unity, it's going to complain to me that um, these two methods over here is marked at override, but it can't find a suitable method to override. And that's because the base view has these two arguments in it. So the, the overridden methods need to have those same arguments in them in order to work. So if I do that, that will get rid of most of my uh, errors. And what's happening now is it's saying that the, um, let's see it here. Oh, what we need to do now is we need to pass these guys into the base, like so. 
So when we call that base update view, it's actually passing these values into the base class, which is this GT view base. All right. And then that's where we're going to process the editor rectangle. Instead of having to process a custom uh, rectangle in both these classes and, and duplicating code, we're just going to do it in that base class. And that way, all the other views will inherit uh, the same code. So it's a great way to keep everything nice and light in terms of the amount of code they have to write. So I'm going to say that the view rect is equal to the editor rect, all right, dot x times the percentage rec dot x, all right? And that basically what it's doing is I'm going to, in the editor view up here, I'm going to pass in um, the actual size of the editor window, and I'm also going to pass in some percentage values. That way I can take a percentage of the overall um, editor over here. I can take a percentage and I can say, well, this view is only um, two-thirds of the size of the whole view, and then the property view is only a third of the view but it allows me then to update the size of those views um, based off of maybe some keyboard input or maybe some mouse input. All right, so we're setting ourselves up so that we can dynamically update our editor views and where the actual GUI is positioned inside of that editor window. All right, so it's just the same thing. So we say editor rec dot y times percentage rec dot y. All right. And same thing for these guys. So editor rect dot width times percentage rect dot width. All right, and we say editor rect dot height times the percentage rect dot height. All right. So what's happening here is now these work these um, child classes. All right, these views right here um, are getting their update views called. We're passing in two arguments here, two rectangles, and we're going to send it to the base class, which is this GT view base class, and we're going to populate the uh, view rect variable with um, the actual rectangle that we want to use for these particular views. All right. So it might still be a little abstract at this point, but um, we are almost done, actually. It doesn't really take that much uh, to get up and running. So what I want to do is I want to go back to the um, the node editor window over here, and I actually want to start to pass in those values. All right, so uh, what I'm going to do is I'm going to pass in the position rectangle. Now, the position rectangle is a built-in rectangle that comes with every editor window. All right, so if you declare or you inherit from editor window, you get the position, and that is literally giving you the rectangle, so the x, y position, and the width and height of the current editor window within the entire screen, okay, within the Unity editor. So that's perfect. Um, so then what we want to do is we want to actually create a new rectangle for the percentages. So the percentages are basically going to give a percentage value to the uh, x and the y and the width and the height for each of these views. So uh, for the work view, we just want to start at 0, 0. So the, if we come back here, so up here, we want to start up here. Okay, and we want it to be just 2 thirds the size of our actual total window, okay? So to do that, uh, what I'm going to do is I'm going to um, put in a value of uh, 0.75, right? So it's two-thirds of a 100%, basically. Or I guess you could say it's three-quarters. <laughs> All right, and then we want uh, the full height, so we just want a percentage value of one for that. Perfect. All right, so then we close that out. And uh, now what I want to do is I want to um, update the property view. So let's update that property view. So again, um, I'm going to pass in the um, position width for this. So I'm going to say new rect. And we're going to say position.width. And we want to send in the position.y. And then we want to do the width and height. So we say position dot width and position dot height. All right, so we're passing in the width for the x parameter over here um, because we want to move it all the way over, and then we're going to use a percentage value to move it back, a certain percentage value. All right, so that's good. So we got that all set up. So the next thing I want to do is 
um, take care of our percentage rectangle. So we're going to say new rect, and we're going to do um, 0 0.075 for this, and then 0f. And then we want to get the opposite. So 1f minus, um, actually, we can just type in, sorry, 0 0.25 for this, and 1. So we get the full height. All right. And then we need one more bracket there. We're all good to go. So let's go back into Unity now and just see if we get everything all working. All right, so we don't have any errors or anything like that. So what we can do now is we can jump into our um, actual views over here. I'm going to remove this or just comment out the debug.logs here, like so. So what we can do now is we can actually go and draw a box so we can see where our views are showing up. So I'm going to say uh, GUI.box. All right. We're going to give it that view rect, right, because we're inheriting that from our view base. So we didn't have to declare it here. So we say view rect, and we give it that view title. There we go. So just like that, we actually <clears throat> have, we'll be able to see where our um, views are located in our editor window. And there you go. So we can probably get rid of this guy now. So I'm going to go over to my editor window, and I don't need this label anymore. All right. So let's go back and take a look at what we did. So you notice that we're getting perfect uh, three quarters of the actual window, all right? And they're dynamically updating based off of the size of the window. So this is always staying at three quarters. And this is always staying at one quarter of that window. So we can actually go and update these values to create some sort of dynamic um, size. So if we go to the editor window, instead of actually typing in a value like this, right? and hard coding that, let's actually make it a little more dynamic. So I'm going to go to and create a public variable here. Oops. I'm just going to say public uh, float. I'm going to call this view percentage. Like so and we're going to set it to a default of 0 0.75, like so. All right, so then what we can do is we can then, instead of typing in this value there, we can just put in percent view percentage. And then instead of putting in 0 0.25, we can do 1f minus view percentage, and that'll give us the opposite. So if this is 0 0.75, we subtract that from 1, and we get 0 0.25. All right, so perfect. So let's take a look and see what we get, and that should be just fine. All right, so we're all good there. All right, so uh, the last thing I want to do is I actually want to um, test uh, to see if we are, if we can um, get a keyboard key, and we can actually move and update that view percentage. So to actually get uh, keyboard events, uh, what we can do is we can utilize uh, the event class. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to declare a new variable called event e, and that's going to be called event dot, or it's going to be filled with the current event. And then what we can do is we can say if e dot type is equal to event type uh, we do a key down, like so. All right. And the e dot uh, key code is equal to, we'll do key code dot left arrow. Then we're going to subtract a little bit from view percentage. So we say view percentage minus equals 0 0.01f. How about that? And we can just copy this, like so. And we can say if you're equal to the right arrow, we can plus equals. All right, so now we're actually updating it based off of some sort of keyboard event. All right, and we're going to cover events in a little bit more detail in a later lesson. But this will just get us up and running so you can see how this system that we've developed to create dynamic uh, views is working. So we're going to update this, let it compile, and if I utilize the left and right keys on the keyboard, we can update the size and proportions of our windows. Perfect. All right, so now we actually have stuff drawing. So inside of our views themselves, we can manage having manage the actual um, GUI inside of that. So what we can do is we can say GUI dot, or GUI layout, sorry, GUI layout, if I could type, GUI layout, 
dot begin area <clears throat> and we're going to give it that view rec so we're working in that same area and then we'll close out that area so we'll say end area and if we put in something like a GUI well let's do a editor GUI layout dot label field we're going to say something like this is a label all right and we can do the same thing for our other view over here in the node property view. And you'll notice that the GUI layout begin area will sit on top of this GUI box. So this GUI box basically is just our background for our particular view. All right, so let's save that and jump back in. There we go. This is the label and this is the label and they updates according to their window size or their rectangle size. All right, so that's how we get um, our views uh, up and running and drawing. Thanks so much. Welcome to creating a node base editor for Unity 3D, uh, lesson six. So what we're going to do is we're going to cover how to actually get editor events um, inside of our window. Okay, so in the last lesson, you saw a really simple example, but what we want to do is actually start to um, perform a little bit more intelligent operations and uh, get the event data organized um, so that um, each view is processing its own events um, currently. Okay, um, and so let's uh, start that process. I'm going to go over into my editor window, <clears throat> and what I want to do is I actually want to move all this event code into a custom uh, method. So what I'm going to do, I'm going to just select all this code right here and I'm going to say refactor. I'm just going to extract the method and put that down in my utility area. So we're going to call this uh, process events. All right. And we're going to pass in that uh, variable, this event right here uh, that we're storing the current event in to uh, our actual method as well. And I'm going to organize my braces here just because I like this view better, it keeps things cleaner. All right, so now what we're doing is we're making sure that um, all of our event code is um, extracted out into its own method and it just keeps things a little bit more organized so our update and our own GUI over here doesn't uh, get too cl uh, cluttered with a lot of code. Um, so I'm also going to add some um, um, comments here. Something's really basic, it's always a good idea to do this. You know, current event like so and we'll just check for um, null views all right perfect all right so uh, we're already getting the current event for uh, the editor window so we already have this so we can start to do um, more custom events um, inside of the editor window as a whole all right so that process events um, it's going to take care of the editor as a whole, all right? But I want to actually isolate out events based off of where the mouse is, whether or not we're over the property view or over the work view, okay? So what I'm going to do is um, get our work views all set up so we can do um, those kinds of operations. So let's, let's uh, take a look and see how that's done. So if you remember, uh, when we set up our uh, base class here, the view base, we actually created a virtual method called process event. So we're actually going to start to override that now in our um, uh, child classes that extend the view base. So if you remember, all we need to do is type out public. Actually, I think that was a protected method. Let's go check. Nope, it's public. All right. So it's going to be a public override, and we can override the process events. All right. And again, I want to make sure that we keep this base dot process events just in case I actually want to do some sort of base level um, event processing across um, all my classes here inside of the base. All right, so I'm going to keep that there. And uh, what I need to do is I actually need to pass in the event. All right, and I don't want to have to constantly go and capture the current event. So what I'm going to do is just declare another argument uh, for this particular function. So remember, our base needs to have the same amount of arguments. All right, and what I want to do is when I update the view, I want to pass in that current event that we're getting uh, from this editor window. So right here, when we get this event, I want to pass it into my view. So I'm going to update my arguments 
um, here for the view base. So I'm going to say event E. And I'm just going to update the, up, the uh, update function here with that same deal. All right. Perfect. Very good. So now what we're doing is we're going to be passing in that event. So I'm going to go back into my editor script here and where I actually declare or I update the view, I'm going to pass in E. Simple as that. So now what we're getting the event in one spot. And so this is something I like to do. I like to make sure that I isolate out a specific func or a specific uh, logic in one place. That way, if there's ever an error, I don't have to check in multiple places. I can just check here to see if we're getting the event or not. All right. All right. So then in our uh, view base, now we're getting the events and we're sending the events in. So then basically what we can do is we can process the events <coughs> and pass an E because that is the current event. And that will then go and update our particular function here in our child class. So the first thing that we really want to do is we want to check to make sure that the mouse is in fact over uh, or inside of this particular view and we can utilize the, um, the view rect, all right, that rectangle that we're building for this particular view. We, what we can do is we can say if uh, e or we can say if uh, view rect dot contains um, e dot mouse position, all right, so if we're inside of that view rectangle, then what we're going to do is we're going to say debug.log <coughs> uh, inside plus view title, like that. All right, so we can then do the same function and put it over in our node property over here, or our property view, excuse me. All right, so then basically now what's going to happen is it's going to tell us, based off of where the mouse is, which view we are over. All right, so let's see if this works. Oh, and we got an error. All right, so let's go make sure we fix our errors first. Always important. <clears throat> let's go over here. So then, oh, that's, we need to pass in the event to our base. Always have to remember to update when you start working with all these virtual methods and overriding and one. have to keep track of that stuff. All right, let's see what this one is here. And based on process events, we need to pass in E as well. There we go. All right, so now we're good. So you'll notice that. Let me clear this again. I'm over the work view. And I'm not actually calling the process events from my property view. There we go. There we go. So now we've compiled, I'm over the work view, and now I'm over the property view. Over the work view, property view. So now we're starting to capture a little bit more um, intelligence from uh, our mouse. So now what we can do is we can put in uh, certain mouse clicks. So for the particular, um, for the work view, uh, what I want to do is I want to make sure that, um, so I'm just going to comment this out. Uh, if we are clicking, let's start to divvy this up by the mouse buttons. All right, so what I'm going to do is I'm going to say if e dot um, button is equal to zero, then what we can do is we can start to check for different things. So then I want to also check for if e dot uh, context click, or sorry, I think it's e dot type. We'll just do e dot button uh, is equal to uh, one. We'll do something. All right. All right. So what we can do is we can say if e dot type is equal to event type mouse down, we'll debug something. All right. Then we can say if e dot type is equal to event type dot uh, mouse drag, we can do something. And then if e dot type is equal to event type dot mouse up, then we can do something else, like so. All right. So for e dot button, if we let's just do a single mouse down, because this is a right click. So we'll just say debug dot log uh, right clicked. 
in plus view title. There we go. So we can just copy off this debug.log and we can say left clicked in. There we go. And then we can paste that. We can say uh, mouse drag like so. And finally, for our mouse up, we can say mouse up. There we go. All right, so now what we've done is we've started to divvy up our mouse actions into um, a nice, clean, organized way. All right, so first we check to see if the mouse is inside of this particular view, inside of its rectangle, and then we check for the button number, and then we check to see if the, mou the mouse button was pressed down, if it was dragged, and if it went back up. All right, so that's basically getting the, the core structure of an event system uh, in place for our different views. So then we're over here. There we go. So you can see that we're getting those nice debug.logs. And if I drag, I'm also getting the drag. And if I right click, I right clicked. There we go. Awesome. So for the property view, we don't really need to do much. Um, and you could always just take this code and and put it in the actual base as well. So we could actually just take all this code right here, cut it, and we could put it into our base over here, like so. And both um, of these views will process the same type of information. So I left click in property view, mouse drag in property view, mouse drag in work view, right? So. You can do it all. Do it in many different ways. Um, I kind of am going to keep this particular code uh, inside of the work view for now because we're really going to be managing a lot of that um, inside the work view, and the property view is just going to have a lot of your standard GUI elements in it. And um, in the work view, we're going to be drawing all the nodes and making connections. And so, really, I just want the uh, code for <clears throat> doing those kinds of actions inside of that work view. Um, as it pertains mostly to this particular view. But if you guys are working on some other type of node editor or some other type of editor window, that's how you could easily have both these views utilize the same code so you're not having to type this stuff over and over again. All right, so that's getting a nice uh, event system up and running and how uh, events work with uh, the editors. All right, perfect. And that basically concludes lesson six. Thanks so much. <laughs>
So I'm just gonna give it like color like that, maybe make it a little bit darker, maybe like the same gray as the Photoshop background here. And then I'm just gonna save it into um, our project. So I'm gonna go find the resources folder, textures, and editor. So I'm gonna also save this as a PNG. So what I'm gonna call this is the uh, view BG uh, normal. All right, so this is just my naming convention um, and you're more than welcome to come up with whatever you want, but I find that it works well. So hit okay, come back into uh, Unity over here and there's a couple things that we need to take into account. So I'm gonna select the texture that we just imported into Unity here. And I'm actually going to set this to GUI Editor Legacy. So uh, if you do this, uh, it'll actually keep the original colors. If you don't do this, then when you set the, um, in the quality, I think it is. Nope, it's in the player. Hit apply there. <clears throat> if we uh, change the color space from gamma to linear, and you don't uh, set your uh, GUI editor uh, textures to this particular GUI editor legacy type, uh, then what will happen is it'll change the colors. Uh, and that is not what we want. We actually want control over the colors of our textures uh, themselves. So um, by setting it to this, uh, we are ensured that it is going to work appropriately. All right, so it's one of those gotchas when creating these types of um, editors for Unity. All right, so uh, what I'm gonna do now is actually go into uh, my editor skin over here. So I'm gonna select the GUI skin that we created. And I'm gonna actually utilize our first custom style. So I'm gonna come into custom styles here and expand element zero. And I'm just gonna call this the view BG. All right, so then inside of normal, what I'm gonna do is actually set the view BG normal, like so. Oops. All right, so that's the texture. And um, I'm going to set the font color to be to be um, a little bit more white, something kind of grayish like that, an off-white maybe. All right. And then what we also need to do is set our border. So the border, um, if you're not familiar, will basically select. Let's go back to Photoshop here. What will happen is it will basically select six pixels in because I set it to six. All right, so these parts are gonna be the parts that stick and everything in the middle is gonna stretch. So that's how we can actually stretch this texture without losing um, its fidelity, all right? So that's what the border is for. And we do have a course on GUI styles and GUI skins um, on GameTutor.com. So if you want more information on how um, all these GUI skins and styles work, I definitely recommend watching that, all right? All right, so then I'm not gonna put any font in here, but if you wanted to change the font, you can go ahead and import some sort of font and assign it to this particular um, uh, GUI style. Um, all right, so I'm actually going to make the font a little bit bigger though, so the font size will be something like 12, um, and that should work out just fine. All right, so now that we've created our GUI skin here, what I need to do is I need to get the views that we created a few lessons ago in lesson four. Uh, and I want to make sure that the views have access to this um, particular GUI skin for our node editor. So I'm gonna come into our views over here. I'm gonna launch the view base. So I'm, I'm gonna make sure that the view base is responsible for getting the um, particular GUI skin. And that's why we set up this variable right here uh, in the previous lesson so that we could store it in there. So the way that we're gonna do this actually is we're going to um, utilize this method that we stubbed in here to actually pull in a reference to the editor skin itself, okay? So what I'm gonna say is I'm gonna say view skin dot, oh, whoops, sorry, view skin equals resources, all right, uh, dot load. And what I wanna do is I wanna go find that path to where that particular um, GUI skin is located. So it's located at resources, and because we're using this resources um, method right here, okay, we can jump automatically into any resource folder and then we can go find where it actually exists. So I'm gonna say um, GUI, GUI skins. So the first one's gonna be GUI skins forward slash. Then we go down to the next folder, editor skins. So editor skins and then forward slash. And then we wanna find node editor skin. All right, there we go. And we'll close it off. 
And then we want to make sure that we cast this to the correct type. So I'm going to say GUI skin, like so. All right, so that basically now, this function will now um, return this skin if it does in fact find it. All right, and it'll store it inside of view skin. So then what we can do um, is we can call this and populate this particular view skin. So here in the constructor for this particular um, class, we can call that right after we have assigned the title. So right when this particular object gets created, it'll go and try to find this particular GUI skin. So we're going to say get editor skin, like so. And then we can also check in our update view. We can say if uh, view skin is equal to null, then what we're going to do is we're going to go find it. And this just helps with the actual runtime uh, portion of our editor. So while the, the um, views are being updated, if the view skin ever becomes null, then we're going to go find it again and basically hit return so that the system can then go back through and redraw everything. All right, so with that all set up, we just need to get our um, child classes, our child views, to actually utilize that new skin. So let's launch the uh, work view and the property view over here. And where we are declaring this uh, GUI.box right here, what we can do is we can actually add one more argument, and you'll notice that it's taking in a style. So what we can do is we can say view skin dot get style. All right. And we want to get that style. So that style that we declared in our particular GUI skin over here is called view BG. So what we can do is we can actually reference it or try to get it by name. So we can say view BG, like so. And then let's do that same thing on the work view over here. So I'm going to find that GUI.box and type that in. So that way we're utilizing that particular style. And now let's go back into Unity and we will launch our node editor. And there you go. So right off the bat, you'll notice that our backgrounds look a little bit different. And what we can do is we can actually start to modify where our uh, labels go, because currently they're being drawn on top of each other. So what I want to do is actually put them in the middle center. That puts them right there. So let's actually do the upper center. There we go. And we can actually get rid of these labels. So let's do that. <clears throat> so I don't need that guy anymore inside of our views. All right, let that recompile. And now what I want to do is actually space out the, uh, the titles a little bit. So I can use the, um, the padding for that. So I can say top, move those down a little bit. All right. And we can also change our overflow. So our left and our right can be changed if we want to add a little bit of a line in there, like so. All right. So that works pretty well. We can also um, not utilize that and actually put a uh, line in our texture. So we can go back to um, Photoshop. So let me actually just double click on my texture here. And what we want to do is actually add maybe just a highlight line over here. So um, I'm going to draw a line. Let's hit the line tool and just make sure it's uh, one pixel. All right, and so I'm going to make it a little bit brighter here. So let's actually, we'll let's draw it out first and then we'll take care of the color later. There we go. All right. So then I'm going to actually duplicate this over here, like so. And I will make this one a little bit darker. So I'm going to come in here and actually, excuse me for a second. Uh, I need to select this guy. Do that. There we go. Well, actually, let's actually collapse this down here. Make another layer here, and we will collapse it downwards. And we'll make this one just a little bit darker. All right, so then we'll flatten it, save it, and reload it. And you'll notice now we have one of those nice, clean uh, lines there uh, for our separation between our property view and our work view. All right, and that's just because we made one side light and one side dark, so it feels like a nice little bevel. All right, so that is basically how we utilize the GUI skins inside of our views. Uh, I'm going to do one more thing here. I'm going to come in, and let's actually change uh, the, the font to a bold and see what that looks like. Well, that's pretty good. 
And I think the color is just a little bit too white, so I'm just going to pull that down a little bit. There we go. All right, so now we are on our way to actually making a nice professional looking uh, node-based editor. All right, so that concludes lesson seven. Thanks so much.